right. Welcome, everybody, to Guy Talk, episode number five. I am your friend, head ambassador for Katie's Mission, Joe P., Joe Pizzamenti. And today I have a very special guest. But before I do that and introduce him, I just want to go over a couple things. Here at Katie's Mission, you know, we, we are big on changing the stigma around mental health and suicide awareness. So guys, as a nonprofit, we are not able to do this on our own. So first thing, go to katiesmission.org or go to our Facebook page, which is where you are watching this right now. And um, anything you guys can do to help us put the word out there, we have a lot of resources, this being one of them, this Guy Talk podcast, which we're gonna go over in a minute. Today's guest on episode number five is a very, very special person. This, this guy, Nick, I think we met probably like a year, year and a half ago um, on social media. We're both Staten Island guys, right? So we're here in New York City, and I really resonated with Nick's story. It really, I'll let him tell it. Obviously, that's what he's here for, but it's very inspiring, to say the least. And having him on today is truly an honor and a privilege. And Nick, first and foremost, thank you, man, for coming on today. I truly appreciate it. Uh, I do. I know you're a busy guy, and for you to take the time today, it, it means a lot to me. So thanks for coming on. Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much. Um, it's my honor. And if this goes for three hours, I could care less. Mental health is something that is near and dear to my heart because, like you said, I I have a I have a son, mm. and the more sensitive I could be now and let him realize that stigma of the way we were brought up. I'm an Italian from Staten Island. Mm. I don't think I ever heard my grandfather or my dad talk about their feelings. And I, in all honesty, you, you mentioned my story and I'll tell it, I'll just go into it. My story is I saw the buildings come down on 9-11. That jersey behind me is my best friend who was killed that day. I used to work at Cantor Fitzgerald. Yes, the number one firm where they lost the most people on that day. I saw the buildings come down. My mind was effed from that. So screwed up. I saw right after 9-11, Staten Island especially they were giving free mental health conversations with people. They were throwing people at me because it, it, it's kind of crappy what happened. And I saw it all transpire and I lost a lot of good, good friends in that building as many people have, especially in Staten Island. Um, I call it six degrees of nine 11. We all know people. And nothing was clicking. When I talk about this, I apologize to people watching this. I either cry or get really angry and I don't know which way I'm going right now. So it just happens. I got really angry with the people that were trying to help me, whether it was my family knew that I needed help or the people actually trying to help me. It just wasn't jiving. And a couple of years ago, I got involved in a side business. I was asked one night at a convention to tell my story. In all honesty, guys, I didn't even know I volunteered for this, if you know what I mean. I was, it was, we were out the night before, woke up the next morning, and I'm like, I volunteered for what? Thank God I did. Sometimes it takes a couple of beverages to get your nervousness out. And I guess I let my guard down and told my story in front of 900 plus of my closest friends. And I let it out. And I admitted that day that I had PTSD. And the reason why I never admitted it in, in conversations I've had since, trust me, that was the start of me letting it out. I let it out a lot now. Anytime I'm feeling down or just want to talk about it, I'll do a live. That's my therapy. And 
my reason I didn't believe I had PTSD because I thought PTSD was military only. Never thought of it that way. I thought by me saying it, I would disrespect the military and that's the last people that I would ever want to disrespect is their families. I am not a military guy, but I, I respect the military more than anybody. And I didn't want to disrespect these men and women who volunteer and, and fight for our country to give me what I could get. And once that hit, once I let that out, it was like the weight of the world was lifted off of my shoulder. And since then, I've had conversations with friends of mine who I became friends with through my story and they were telling me, oh my God, Nick, this is, they're educated in this. And now we have conversations. I found the right people to have the conversations with. And it's so ironic because I have friends of mine that hate Facebook, hate it. Oh, talking all the time. I'm not on Facebook. And I'm like, dude, Social media pretty much saved my existence. I would get up in the morning and be like, oh, crap. My, I, I'm able to open my eyes today. Talk about something that like you would never be able to talk about in my family. My mom, yes. My dad at the time who might be on here, to be honest, he, he finds me every time I speak now. My biggest supporter. I taught him how to talk more. When he comes in in the summer, he he comes in from my buddy's golf outing that I, I run a golf outing for him, for his foundation. And my father, it's a totally different relationship since I started doing this three years ago. And it's amazing how one little change could lead to a trigger of changes. I talk about triggers a lot on my lives. I could tell you what 9-11 smells like. I could tell you what the, the certain things that I look at that trigger that whole thought process, tastes. We have a lot of triggers in our life. Smell during September is hell for me. Just like certain days, I can't describe it, but the smell of like crispness, you know, thinking about going to play golf on a September day where it's not hot, but it's nice out, that blows me out of the water. And the simple flip of the script of changing the way I open my eyes in the morning and what I say immediately after it. I went from, oh Christ, I'm alive to hell yeah, I'm alive to hell yeah, what am I going to do today? Whose lives am I going to change? How am I going to make my life better today? How am I going to make the friends that joined me in my journey, how am I going to help them make their lives better? And it's a Simple, simple thing. And I don't want to minimize it because I know a lot of people in this page, it's about mental health. Listen, I've been there. I've been to the bottom of the pit. I'm married. I have two beautiful children, a loving wife, a supportive wife. And I was at the bottom of the barrel. Shame on me. Shame on me. And why was I not living those 20 years or so between 9-11, 2000, when my daughter was one years old, to now not living every day to the fullest? I, I wasted 20 years. And I'm, people say to me all the time, well, you're so over the top right now. Fuck yeah, I'm over the top now. I missed 20 years. It's, we're going big or we're going home right now. Joe, you know, in the two years that we know each other from pretty much a distance on social media, the guy followed me and I never understood 
the power that we all have by positive thought, kind words, lifting others up, shame on this world right now. Shame on what's going on right now. And I'm not here to be the old man. By the way, I'm 50. So I get to preach a little, but shame on us, man. And Joe, you hear me, we talk a lot now. And you hear me say all the time, don't sweat the stuff you can't control. Don't sweat the small stuff. If you can't really control it, okay, go do what you gotta do. The world we live in right now, to go to a gym, I have to wear a mask. Do I believe it? Or do I believe in it? No, but I'm wearing a mask. I can't control it. That owner wants me to do that. I want to work out there. Let's go do it. Mental health leads to physical health, to the way your world is portrayed. If your mind isn't right, you got to really work on it. You got to work on it. That's the number one thing. Growing, I mentioned I'm from Staten Island. I mentioned I'm a little bit Italian, if you can't tell by the hands. I can, I can go for days. I feel like I'm talking to my wife right now with the hands yeah. moving back and forth. Yeah, well, I, 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 I would sit on my hands, but then I look like I got a big head and a little body. Um, I, we weren't allowed to do certain things as kids. Um, I was taught survival of the fittest. And I make a joke, I go, ooh, survival of the fittest. We all thought it was this. This is survive. This is what we're going through right now. If this ain't right, I, I tell people, if this ain't right and you need somebody to talk to, DM me. I'll have a conversation with you for days. I'll make you forget about how, ain't, how this ain't right. And I don't care who you are. I talk to everybody. My wife cracks up. I was in Home Goods the other day. I thought of, she, this, she makes these stories up. She goes, I heard you talking. You're in Home Goods. What are you doing? Well, some lady was there. What, I started talking to her. Why not? I don't know what she's going to. She could be the Queen of England for all I know. If I don't say hello to her, I don't know if she's the Queen of England. Why not? I'll talk to anybody because I missed out. I missed out on people making me happy for 20 years that I didn't know and me making other people happy. So it's a simple flip of your mind, man. And I know it's hard for some people. And I could tell you step by step what I did to get me out of it. The difference now is I know when I'm headed towards the pit and I stop it cold. I know when I'm headed there. Trust me. It goes back to that word triggers, right? You know your trigger. You know your I triggers. know my triggers. I know when, you know, when the crap piles on, sometimes it's hard. And it's going to pile on. It's going to pile on. What happened? It's going to pile on. It's, it's going just inevitable. to. Right. It's you, you got to make yourself so mentally strong. I keep it simple. I work on Wall Street. I'm a numbers guy. My team knows I'm a numbers guy because I tell them numbers all the time. But it's simple math for me in the morning. If I get up in the morning, this is me. I get up in the morning and I think positive thoughts right off the bat. I'm in the plus sign. I'm in the plus column for the positive thoughts. It's going to take a couple of shitty things to happen to me to get back down to negative. See, the way I used to wake up was I went here. I opened my eyes. Oh, crap. I'm alive. Boom. I'm, I'm now, I need a couple of positive things to get me back over positive. And as we know, that's not the way life is. Think about it. I do this all the time. I got the greatest answer three or four days ago from a dude in the gym. I ask everybody, how you doing? Do it yourself. Just start asking people, friends, family, the grocery store. How you doing, ma'am? To the lady who's taking my money. 
They really don't take money anymore. They just swipe stuff. They don't pack bags, but they just swipe stuff. Um, how you doing? Oh, Fanab, imagine yo, this happened to me. This happened there. This happened there. Yes, the woman who's behind the counter is a little old Italian woman. <laughs> the other day I asked somebody, hey, bro, what's up? How you doing? I'm blessed, man. I stopped in my tracks. I was like, because now I prepare for the, the negative. I am so blessed, you can't even believe it. You know, I stood and talked with that gentleman for 40 minutes, and I was like, he's got it. He understands what's going on, and he knows. So I learned from him that day. I asked the question. I'm not giving that answer. I'm blessed. Mm -hmm made me look like a fool. I was like, damn, there you are. I, I hugged the guy. It got a little weird because COVID in, in Staten Island, everybody's like, why are these two guys hugging? It just struck me. It, it shot yeah. right through my heart. And I'm like, this guy gets it. And these are the little things that I'm on here right now talking about how I deal with it. And I'm learning every single day how to do better with it. It's, it's, I, I call it a struggle. Life's hard. It is. Raising children are hard. I have a 20 and a 19 year old and oh my God, no book prepared me for that. I am not up for any awards for father of the year. Trust me. I failed so much at that, but it made me a better person. Made me a better father. Talking like this, my kids are like, yeah, don't ask my dad. I think they tell their friends, don't ask my dad how he's doing because he's going to tell you. And I preach a lot because it's tough now with the kids. It is. It is. And, and I like how you, you just said it, you know, you're going to tell them, but I'm sure there was a time there where you don't want to hear from anybody. You didn't want to tell anybody anything, especially after 9-11. I can't imagine those feelings, right? Um, I know for me, when I was, I was working at at and at the time, I did disaster recovery. I worked overnight, 12-hour shifts to try to help, you know, restore the city. Um, but I had a friend that worked with me, a military guy who had to be deployed down there. And he's still struggling to this day because the things he saw, he said, it didn't even compare to when he was in the military. Yeah, so that, that happens that you're here today, yeah, yeah. The fact that you're here today and you've figured out a way. And, and like you said earlier, it's all about your mind, right? That's really what it's about. It's about, and you said, I like what you said before, it's, it's simple. It's not easy, right? It's yeah. not easy. It's simple. Two totally different things. Just flipping your mindset, you know, just it, it could, what it could do it is amazing. Like you're sitting here now telling your story. Three years ago, you were, you were on stage in front of all those people telling your story. You would have never thought that would happen, right? I would have never thought you'd know, be sitting here hosting a podcast about men talking about mental illness. But when you, you work know, on Steve, you know, I didn't know I had a story. I didn't, didn't know I had right. I didn't want everybody to hear my story. I thought my story stuck, right? That's oh, what I right. thought. I, 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 and, and, it's, and when you when you realize that and you could actually tell it and then even better when you you could talk to a guy at the store and, and see that he's kind of resonating with what you're about and then you could have that conversation and actually embrace somebody like that in today's world when like you said everybody's just complaining about something it's amazing it really is and I really got to say I respect the way you have done what you've done right? Because I'm sure, look, your, your kids see it, right? Look at that. Look at, look at what you're doing for them as they get older, right? Seeing you do go through this. So I applaud you for that, man. I really do. Thank you. I, I, you know, I appreciate that. I, I don't, I, know you do. I don't, I appreciate any applause for anything because it's hard. It's, it's hard to do. Words are the most powerful thing in your arsenal. 
you could, with one word, could be the same word, totally destroy somebody the way you say it, or totally lift them up to a place they've never been before. And it's all in the way you say something. You could completely cut somebody down at the knees by saying something to hurt them in a way that you're coming off hurting them. And it happened to me the other day, somebody said something and they were trying to get me and I just won't let it be. I talk about haters. My job in life is to make every single person I come into contact with as happy as they could friggin' be. If it's making fun of myself, okay, so be it. If it's telling them they look good, when did it become such a bad thing to, to tell somebody, yeah. hey, you look great today, keep it up? When did that happen? I'm not stopping it. I said it to somebody in the gym today. They were like, dude, that's awesome that you just said that to me because I was feeling down about myself because I see myself Every single day, I see myself get on the scale every day and the weight hasn't been changing. And I said to this person, and it was a guy, hey, dude, you're leaning up, man. You look fucking, you look phenomenal. And he was like, you "You really, you see it? I said, yeah, I haven't seen you in a bit, but I know you've been working out. His shoulders went from. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was like ready to to lift the gym up. And I was like, just telling him what I saw. Right. Why can't we do that to each other right now? It's so important. There are so many people struggling every single day to get out of bed. Let's go around and get them the hell out of that bed. Let's get them to the next level. I'm I'm the guy that you guys know, some people on my team probably on here right now. I love goals. The minute you hit them, what's next? What's next? What are we doing yeah. next? Because you didn't think you could do that. Right. Let's do it again. Some some something bigger. Let's go bigger. Because what's the worst that's gonna happen? You're gonna fail at it? Okay, we're gonna learn through that failure how to not fail the next time. And I was a baseball player that when I made an error, it was the worst thing in the world. And I got reamed for it. Didn't want to make an error. And I believe failure was bad. Three years ago, that all changed. Yep. And it's amazing how I'm succeeding so much more looking for failure. It's crazy blows my mind out of the water i my son's a lacrosse player in college fail as much as you can man Mm. you don't think you could lift that weight go try you're not lifting it if you're not trying so you're already failing at it so why don't you go try it and if you do it hey awesome if you don't let's get stronger to do it this is this is it's it's there could be people on here right now saying wow this sounds pretty simple it is we overcomplicate everything in our we lives. We do. We overcomplicate things and we get comfortable and our programming is what it is um, over the years growing up. And I'm a firm believer in we are what we speak, right? So, you know, if your son says, oh, I can't get that weight up, guess what? You're not getting that weight up no matter what you do, right? And I don't believe in failing. I believe in growing, right? So, and it's the same thing as learning, right? When you learn, you're going to grow from it. So, just speak a little bit to about, you know, what you're doing now to really just stay this motivated to stay as upbeat as you are. If you have any advice for anybody that's struggling that, that, which we know a lot of people are, um, especially in today's world, you know, how can they get out of it? You know, what, what can they do to, you know, just make that flip, right? Flip that switch. Well, I I keep referencing three years ago and being part of a convention, being part of a company. I take supplements. I take vitamins. I take supplements. Um, It just so happened I started my whole journey for weight loss. 
And a side effect of some of the stuff I was taking was this whole mindset change Mm -hmm. where I called the person that I bought the stuff from and I'm like, dude, something weird is going on here. I, I would, I can tell you the day, the minute, the second that it happened, Joe knows Staten Island driving into the city. You go through the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. That's not called the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel anymore. And every day I would crank my music up and I'd start having an anxiety attack every single day because that was my trigger every single day. As I was taking these supplements every day, after a month or so, it started to be more manageable. It's not curing it. As it was becoming more manageable, that's when I started working mindset into my daily routine. Sounds crazy. Guy from Staten Island got in his own head and didn't blow up. What happened with that was this started happening with other people and they started joining my team. And as they joined my team, we would have conversations and it just kept building and building and building where we were all on the same page where that team of people that I didn't know half of them that joined me knew when I was having a bad day would reach out to me. They would see triggers on my posts. Nick, you are right today. I know your story. 9 11 is coming up. We're here for your brother. Do you need this? You, we became a family. Now, I'm not saying my, my, my real family wasn't there for me, but I was so effed up for so many years. My mother was tiptoeing on glass when she was around me. Didn't know how to approach me. We didn't talk about certain things in our house. My parents were divorced. We didn't talk about it. It just happened. We got mad. It just happened. But now you have this community of people where you feel like you're invincible. And what happens when you feel invincible? You take bigger risks. You talk to more people about it. You start saying, hey, this stuff made me happy. Why not give it a shot? It was one simple change that led to a whole armful of changes that I didn't realize I was making every single day. And that's the beauty of the whole thing. It happened without me knowing. I was like taking something for weight loss. And I'm like, hello, is this like a side effect that I become more sensitive and I start feeling better? And you know, it just happened, but then it becomes contagious. That's my goal. Make this happiness so effing contagious that everybody wants to do it. Like what's that dude doing? What's making this guy So happy, he just got punched in the face. Yeah, I'm not skipping around, but all right, what's something's got to be going on for you to be that angry? I think what it all comes down to is one word awareness, right? And understanding when those triggers are going to come in and what you need to do. Obviously, you know, you have a great goal. I love your goal to make everybody happy and make every listen. I was never a happy person. You know, I, 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 I hated myself. I couldn't even look in the mirror. I didn't even want to shave. I still don't shave as often as I should, but that's another story. But for me, that man in the mirror, it just, I hated it. And Nick, I get up every day and it's not easy putting one foot in front of the other still as positive as I am, but I'll be damned if I don't tell myself every morning I love myself in that mirror, right? And it's all because of the mind flip. It's all because of changing that mindset from a negative to a positive. 
because we are what we speak, right? For so long, I spoke all negative words. Every word out of my mouth was a negative one. And now, yeah, they, they come, come and go here and there, but I, I quickly go to, a, what am I grateful for, right? I talk about that a lot. Every day I have my gratitude list. What am I grateful for? And it can be something so stupid, like the sun came out today, right? Or, you know, I got some water that I could go wash my hands, right? Those little, little, little things that we never understood are so big, right? And it really can help you get through any kind of mental illness to have some gratitude in your life. And, to, and, to, and like you said, that support and the, the family that you have, the, the people, the tribe, right, that you have now around you, it can't help but motivate you and make you a better person. Oh, and, uh, the, the, the motivation. Like if I don't show up, I'm failing so many people on a daily basis. And I need to know that. Yeah. Because that's what gets me out of that trigger. Mm -hmm. Like, like, don't, don't get me wrong. Some days I don't want to do a call, but I'm going to, yeah. I might not be a hundred percent, but you want to know something that day, that person that I'm helping, they want to be a hundred percent. I'm telling you, you asked one question with that, one of the questions you asked in the last little piece was, and what do you recommend? I recommend anybody watching this to friend me. And if you're down, <laughs> hit me up. We're going to find something that's going to make you not down anymore. We owe it to each other. Hmm. We owe it that you got to take accountability for yourself and what you're doing to help other people. I don't know when this became a non-service job life. Your job is to service other people every single day. Do not take a day off because you want to know something. The person you're passing could be having the worst day of your mm. life, their lives. And you saying, what's up, bro? might flip them out of that worst day. Simple. I, I don't I don't know how to make it more difficult. It's the my life is very simple. K I S S. Yep. Keep it simple, stupid. I'm the stupid. I have to tell myself to stop reinventing the wheel. Yeah. It's simple. Be nice to people. Watch what happens. Even if they're being mean to you. Yo, okay, that's fine. Listen, okay. we live in Staten Island. Yep. <laughs> kind of hard. You know, All you, right, bro. You, you, All like, good. No fighting. All right. You having you, a bad you day? You were surprised when you, that guy said he was blessed. I, I, I would have probably fell on the floor. Fire. I mean, just knowing people here around here, that's an amazing, and I'm sure you had an amazing conversation because oh. of it, right? I mean, that's a, and Phenomenal. yeah, so... No, great stuff, man. Listen, I, I truly appreciate you coming on today. I know we had to reschedule from last week, but I appreciate you making the change. And um, just any last words of wisdom before we wrap it up here. Number one, these ain't, this isn't wisdom. This is, this is life. This is, this is a lot of picking myself off the ground. Mm. And the one thing you need to do is understand when you fall, there are people like us that are going to lift you up. And we're not only going to lift you up. We're going to carry you for a little while till you get your feet under you. And then we're going to walk with you. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start running with you when you want to run at your pace. It's not our pace. That's it. Yeah. Those are my words of wisdom. Just simple. Be nice to each other. Somebody's mm. being a prick to you. Something's going on, man. Just be nice yep. to them. Yep. Kill them with kindness. It sounds... See, where we live in New York, we are jaded by those concepts. Kill them with kindness is kind of hard to do when you cut somebody off on accident and they want to kill you. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do. But you want to know something? You made a mistake. Say you're sorry. Mm. Move on. 
but the people Tell that me. are in your inner circle Tell them, hey, love you, man. Hey, love you, Danielle. Hey, love your family. Love what you're doing. Keep it up. Just keep going. That person needs the push. You got to know how to hmm. push each person you come in contact with. You can't give somebody a shove like Elaine used to give the shove in Seinfeld. But there are some people that could take a shove. Me, I need the kick yeah. in the booty. Some people are yeah. fragile. But if you let people know that you're there to hold their hand when, when the shit hits the fan, sometimes that's all mm. they need to not go the, to the downward spiral. Those are my right. words. Be friggin' nice. It's kind of simple. It's like when I tell people about my supplements. I keep it simple. Just try it. What do you got to lose? Just yeah. be nice to yeah. people. What do you got to lose? Guess what, guys? What's going on right now? Ain't really working for anybody. Mm. This whole hatred thing? Yeah, no, not for me. Not for me. No. I'm going to go the other way. Be different. Choose happy. Watch what happens to you. This is coming from a guy that's 50 years old on Staten Island. I chose happiness, yeah. changed my whole existence. Those are my words. <laughs> that's great. Listen, and, and it's such a simple thing to choose to be happy. Um, I tell people all the time, I believe stress is a choice. I believe depression is a choice. Um, and this comes from somebody that's been to every therapist known to man and taken every type of antidepressant. But the moment that I, number one, forgave myself, and number two, just decided I want to be happy. I mean, life changes, right? And and I appreciate you coming on today and sharing your story. I know it's not always easy for you, and uh, I know for a fact you touched a lot of people today and inspired them. So thank you again, brother. I appreciate it. I love you, and uh, I'm very love grateful you, that you came on. Today. Appreciate you, dude. Thank you. Right, everybody, so thank you. Um, episode number five, we will be back next month with episode number six. My guest will be Joe Bernie, and I'm looking forward to that. But guys, katiesmission.org, and come to the Katie's Mission page where you're watching this now, and uh, just like the page, share it, and anything you can do to support us, we need your help. We appreciate it. All right, take care. Have a good night, guys.